Well, Democrats have been hyping up the Russian collusion story, of course, but they're also downplaying everything having to do with the Uranium One story. It's been carried on no other networks with one minor exception. There is evidence it's not fake news. It is a real story. Roy Murdoch has been covering it carefully. He's a contributing editor at National Review Online, and he joins us tonight. DeRoy, I don't think I'm making that up. This story has basically not appeared on other channels, again, with, I think, just one exception. I haven't seen it on the front page of The New York Times, The Washington Post. How can that story be ignored? You're right. It's amazing. According to the uh, Media Research uh, Center, I think between uh, over the last... Uh, 10, 11 months, the networks have spent something like three minutes and one second on this story. And what's amazing about it, whether you think it's uh, got legs or not, you've got uh, bribery, you've got kickbacks, you've got extortion, you've got Russians, you've got uranium, uh, the main ingredient for atomic bombs. I mean, this is interesting stuff. This is the, the things of which spy novels are made. And uh, and yet the networks ignore this and, and still talking about Russia, 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 and what was there, what collusion was there. And it appears as if we had collusion on the part of not the Republicans, but on the part of the Democrats, Hillary Clinton, and now the Podesta Group, all, all designed around uh, bringing in $145 million, a tremendous amount of money, into the Clinton Foundation. And in exchange, the Russians uh, now control 20% of the United States' uranium supply. And apparently some of that uranium is leaving this country. Uh, it yes, seems like something worth covering to me. I think it is. And Russia is at the very center of it. So as you just said, board members of this company, which is controlled by the Russians, donated $145 million to the Clinton Family Foundation. Absolutely. At around the same time that Hillary Clinton's State Department okayed the deal. Now, look, I'm not alleging criminality here, but I'm noting the obvious, which is what? How can that not be a legitimate line of inquiry for journalists? And, you know, maybe uh, after looking into it, it turns out it's really more innocent than it is. I don't think so. But, yeah, at least look into it. And I, I'm glad to see that the House and House Intelligence Committee and I believe uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee are now going to look into this. They've not held a, a hearing on Uranium One yet. And these are the Republicans who, who control Congress. I find that astonishing. So I'm glad that they finally look like they're going to uh, hold hearings on this. I believe they're trying to get the... Uh, uh, the gag order lifted on this confidential witness, this businessman who actually was cooperating with the FBI in all of this. Uh, he was put under a, a gag order by the Obama administration, so he actually wouldn't talk to Congress. Imagine that. So they're trying to get that uh, uh, gag order lifted. It should be lifted we, since, of course, uh, Eric Holder and Loretta Lynch are no longer running the uh, Department of Justice. That's now the job of, of Jeff Sessions, the Donald Trump administration. So that gag, gag order should be lifted right now, and that person ought to be able to come forward and, and tell us what he knows. Really quickly, is there any legitimate reason for keeping someone like that under a gag order? And is that constitutional in the first place? How can the executive branch say to the Congress, we don't want this guy to talk, therefore he can't talk? Is, is that allowed in a democracy? Uh, no, the Congress is a totally separate and equal branch. They have every right to bring, bring him in and learn from him what they can yeah. so they can do their jobs. Uh, I don't think they knew about this guy. The thing is that it's not like uh, they... they uh, uh, wanted to get him and then they gagged him. I think the, they had him so under wraps that they didn't even know this guy existed until probably last week, which is extraordinary. All this was going on and the congressional oversight that should have taken place while Russia gained control of 20 percent of the United States supply of uranium and the Obama administration kept the Congress in the dark on this, which I think is extraordinary. What were they yeah, hiding? I mean, it's not like 20 percent of our national supply of string cheese. No, it's uranium. No, yes. <laughs> I mean, that's inherently... Yeah, or, or cashews uh, or bacon. No, this is the stuff well, that now, people now use. You're Closer well, to I guess home. bacon, that would, we would yeah. be concerned about that. This is the there stuff would... people use to create nuclear weapons. This is right. serious stuff, and now some of it appears to be leaving this country. This is deadly, deadly stuff. This is potentially life and death, and I really wish that the media would be awake about this rather than continue to snore on channels other than this one. Well, Congress, Congress certainly is, and we're going to get to that right now. Droy, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tucker. Well, as you just heard, two House committees have launched a joint inquiry into the Uranium One deal following revelations that the Justice Department discovered a massive Russian bribery ring supporting the deal but did not tell Congress about it. Congressman Ron DeSantis represents the state of Florida. He serves on the House Oversight Committee, one of the two involved in that investigation. He joins us tonight. Congressman, thank you. Thanks for having me. So, first things first, how could Congress not have known about this? Well, just first with the string cheese, I think if Donald Trump sold string cheese to the Russians, the Democrats would be upset about that. Uh, right. So it, it's really mind boggling. I mean, we have this informant that we want to bring in. I think we will get him in either through subpoena or by them lifting the gag order. He started working as a confidential informant in 2009. He was in the middle of this racketeering, Russian racketeering ring, 2009, 2010. And then the Uranium One deal is approved at the end of 2010. So the FBI knew that underneath this Uranium One deal, forget about all the money of the Clintons, which is serious, 
underneath that is all this criminality. Nobody informed Congress of that. And there was opposition to this deal in Congress anyways, just based on the merits. Right. But imagine something propped up by repeated criminality. I think that probably would have been enough had Congress known to put political pressure on the administration to kill the deal. How can the former administration or any administration tell the Congress of the United States that it can't interview somebody? Well, here's the thing. I think even on some of those NDAs, which are used sometimes of confidential right. form, you, you valid subpoena, you have to go and appear. They can't prevent you exactly. from doing that. So at a minimum, we can send a subpoena, and I think we will do that. But I think that the Attorney General wants, wants this guy to talk, and I think they are working to kind of clear whatever uh, brush they need to to, to, to produce them. So sweep away the politics in all this. Why would it ever be a good idea for any administration to give a fifth of our strategic uranium reserves to the Russian government? I don't think it would be. And you notice the Democrats say the worst thing that happens in the world is Russia spending $100,000 on Facebook ads. Half of which ran after the election. Exactly. And so for them to think that's the big deal but then not think the uranium is a big deal, I just don't understand how you could hold that position. Have you heard anybody defend it on the merits? I mean, I hear a lot of people say, Hillary Clinton obviously had nothing to do with this because yeah, she's so great. They don't. They say, it's oh, it's just, it's, it's been debunked, don't worry, but there's not a substantive defense for it. And when you mention all the money going into the foundation and the 500000 to build personally for a 20-minute speech, they say, oh, well, that's fine. It was the, here's my question. They were sending hundreds of millions of dollars during the pendency of this deal. How much money have they sent since the election to the Clinton Foundation? Great, great question. Are they, are they raking in money? No, no, no one's sending and in And I don't know the answer to that, but it's worth finding out. Um, quickly, we reported at the top of the show that Paul Manafort, who was the former chairman briefly of the Trump campaign, was before that working with the Podesta Group. One of his jobs was to lobby the Obama administration on behalf of Russia. Our source says he routinely took Russian business figures up to the Hill to meet with the members. Are you aware of that? Did you see that? I never saw that. No, I didn't. I mean, I think it's pretty clear Manafort was involved in Eastern European politics, Russian politics. That, I think, is why all the smoke has come out about Trump. I don't think it has anything to do with Trump. I think a lot of this predates the campaign, and I think that's what the special counsel Were you aware about. that Paul Manafort was working with the Podestas on behalf of Russia? No. Amazing. Amazing story. Congressman, thank you. Thank you.